It's always your own people, sometimes it's your own people. This is Killer Instinct, kid, I'm poor, kid. I'm coming with more shit than your average dork, kid. If this is Mario Kart, dude, I'm Bowser. I'm coming highway, plus my word is much louder. What's up, my wizards? Dev, SBMTG, down there with magic stuff on YouTube. I've got a deck tech for you today, and it's only going to cost you anywhere between 5 and $10 on TCG Player. I actually think this is one of the better budget decks that we've done in a while. This is Boros One Drops. This is a take on a deck that actually did really, really well at SCG Open Baltimore. Um, a lot of decks in that field ran a lot of, you know, just mono-white base aggro shell, and then expanded on that by adding a color, you know, um, and the deck that came in second place was just mono-white, straight up. Um, so we're not playing that strategy entirely because it played, you know, two and three drops and stuff. The Blue White Humans deck that's reminiscent of this plays five drops. We don't have that luxury. We're going to try and spend as little money as possible on the deck. But we still have a very aggressive strategy that can win games pretty fast. Speaking of SCG Open Baltimore, I just want to thank Wizards of the Coast, which is mind-blowing. They put us on Wizards.com um, in the Stuff to Watch Today category for our coverage of SCG Open Baltimore. That was really, really cool, and I sound calm about it now, but I was literally freaking out. Thank you. Thank you, Wizards. You guys are cool. And one more thing before we get into the deck. If you enjoy the content, like it. Just hit the thumbs up button. That's all I want you to do. Let's check this deck out. We're playing 28 one-drop creatures in the deck. That's a lot. And as a matter of fact, every non-land card in the deck, creature or not, is only the one mana. That's awesome. It allows us to play next to no lands. And as long as we have two mana out, we can do a bunch of stuff on our turns. <laughs> That's cool. Um, but 28 creatures, we want to play as many one-drop guys that either have two power or can get two power as we possibly can. That lets us have 16 guys in this deck that are just the one mana but can either have two power or come into play with two power. So let's check those guys out right now. We're playing four copies of Village Messenger in the deck. We're playing four copies of Dragon Hunter, four copies of Expedition Envoy, and four copies of Town Gossip Monger. Uh, Village Messenger, you're not really worried about human synergy in this deck at all, so we don't care if it transforms and is no longer a human. We, we don't care. Um, just the fact that it can have two power is great in haste is actually pretty important, you know. You can put this down um, after mass removal, let's say, and then put a couple of pump effects on it. You've got yourself seven damage right there. So Village Messenger is good as a surprise sometimes, too. Um, Gossip Monger over there was proven to be pretty good at the, uh, at the SCG Open in Baltimore. A lot of people liking this card, and I can see why. Um, we have a lot of creatures in the deck, so its ability to transform is easily fulfilled. And once it does transform, it gives us a decent mana sink, you know? If we draw a bunch of lands we don't necessarily need, this is the mana sink we can pump everything into and make it bigger. This is technically like the biggest guy in the deck once he flips. So <laughs> Gossip Monger is very, very important. Definitely play the playset of that. Um, Dragon Hunter and Expedition Envoy are just two power guys, and Dragon Hunter has the um, the advantage of being a Jutai proof. That's cool. Even the Bant Dragons deck has seen a little bit of play in this format. I saw it come in fifth place at, um, I think, an Invitational qualifier. So, uh, Bant Dragons, uh, you know, whatever. <laughs> also good against Silmgar, you know, but mostly Ojutai is what we're worried about right now, and Dragon Hunter is good against him. Um, but just having, you know, eight dudes that come to play two power no matter what, very important. I am best friend with Cooper Seppo Roth and Dr. Wiley, always smiley, but my thoughts are red just like my eyes be on. Well, that's all the two power one drops. That leaves us with quite a few guys that don't have two power. Why play them? I'll explain. Four copies of Thraben Inspector. Another thing that was proven to be pretty good at this last um, open in Baltimore. A lot of decks playing this guy. The fact that he's just a one mana guy with two toughness, that can sometimes be important. But mostly the fact that he basically says, draw a card whenever you want to for two mana. That's great, but just three mana, we can draw a card and play any single card in the entire deck that we happen to draw, you know? So that's, that's pretty awesome right there. Helps us get a little refill. It's decent against mass removal too. It's, it's, it's at least resilient is all. So just the fact that this guy allows us to draw us a card whenever we want to, as long as we have the mana for it, into their turn, whatever, you know, um, is really good. I think he definitely is worth playing, if only because he's a warm body and a drawn card. Four copies of Toppelgeist in the deck. Again, we don't have to worry about human synergy. We can just play whatever one drops that we want to. And Toppelgeist is basically a spell. You know, that when he enters the battlefield, tap a guy. can be really important, you know, when we're just trying to get through some damage very early in the game, which is where we live. We want to get through all of our damage in the first, like, four or five turns if we possibly can. It's fairly hard to get the Delirium with this guy, but if you do, and it is possible at least, I mean, we have the option in the deck, um, but if you do, it's pretty great. You know, tapping down a dude every combat is great. But mostly the fact that he's evasive, that's also got a lot of pump spells in the deck, so having an evasive dude is really, really good. And the fact that when he comes down, he removes their biggest guy from combat for a turn, very, very important. 
three copies of Stern Constable in the deck. That looks kind of weird. Now, if you're playing any higher budget than this, you might want to cut Stern Constable for something bigger. Like Thalia's Lieutenant would be a good, good call, you know. Um, either of the Lieutenant's consoles or Thalia's. Um, but since I'm just going with one drops here, I actually like that this allows us to enable Madness on Fiery Temper. I think it's important that we play Fiery Temper. We can often get it off for just the one mana. You know, we've got a Stern Constable in play. Not only that, but we can tap one of their guys down, which I've already said is pretty important. We live in the first few turns, and if on, say, turn three, you can take out one of their guys with a Fiery Temper and tap down another one of their other guys, that's a really good play for you. So, really have enjoyed Stern Constable so far. I don't know that I've played the playset, although enabling the Madness is very important, but even if you're not enabling Madness, he allows you to, say, discard unwanted lands to tap down guys. That's actually pretty important, too. And the last creature I'm playing in the deck is just a silver bullet copy of Lightning Berserker. She's still in the format, and it's like people have forgotten. She's in Dragons of Dark here, we can play this thing. Um, and this is actually good against mass removal and sorcery speed removal. You know, Declaration of Stone was probably the number one played removal piece over the weekend. And that's just not SCG Open Baltimore. That's the IQs, the super IQs that SCG put on. So this card was played, De Declaration was played a lot. Um, over the weekend. Sorcery Speed Removal is really in in the format. The Languish is played in the Black-White deck, the uh, Black-White Midrange deck, and the Black-White Eldrazi deck. People play it in the sideboard. Um, so things like Mass Removal also pretty important in the format. Chandra, a very important card to say the least. Radiant Flames is important. So this gets around all of that. And yeah, we're not playing all the mana or even all the red mana um, in the deck, you know, uh, but still this can help us recover from Mass Removal and get around Sorcery Speed Removal. I really see no reason not to at least try and play the one copy of her. Before I move into the spells, let's talk about the enchantments we're running. We're running three Aris, all three of them are Griff's Boon. Card did prove itself a little bit over the weekend, turns out to be pretty darn good. Um, especially with like Thalia's Lieutenant and um, Cult Leader, you know, when you get through a huge one of those, it's really good. But in this deck, it gives a much needed buff to our dudes and allows them to fly, you know. All we need is for guys to get through for a few turns, this helps do that pretty well. And, again, against things like mass removal or really just removal of any kind, this will fall into the graveyard and get it back later, which is super important. Because we're going to get a lot of our guys removed. Just remember that. You're going to get guys removed. I keep bringing up uh, mass removal. And really the best advice I can give you when playing this deck, period, is to not overextend. If, you know, don't overextend your board if you know that the deck you're playing against has Languish, Radiant Flames, Slaying Tendrils, Chandra, whatever. Um, just don't overextend. You know, you can you can play a little bit longer against those decks because they don't have as many viable threats um, to play against you. You know, you can hold back and just have like two pump spells in your hand and hit them all at one time when they can't do anything about it. There are definitely ways to beat control and mid-range decks with this deck. You just have to be a really good aggro player. Um, and this deck will teach you how to do that, <laughs> definitely, if you play it enough. Into the spells, we're playing 11 of them, and 7 of them are pump spells. We're playing 4 copies of Titan Strength in the deck, and 3 copies of Lithomancer's Focus. Um, Titan Strength was a no-brainer. I would say it's definitely the best pump spell in the format. It allows us to not only make a dude huge for a turn, and you know if he goes unblocked, that's at least 4 damage, if not 5 or 6, that we're getting through right there. Um, but also, the Scry always been important is very important in this deck, allowing us to either scry away lands that we don't want, or scry into lands that maybe we do want. You know, either situation is very important. That scry, don't forget it. A lot of people forget the scry. Don't forget the scry. is very important on Titan Strength. So that was a no-brainer inclusion. But I had a lot of options for the other pump spell. You know, I thought about Rush of Adrenaline because I really like the way it interacts with Titan Strength. You know, Titan Strength plus Rush of Adrenaline and tr that gives the dude trample and at least five power. So that looked good. Um, same thing with Strength in Arms. I thought about Strength in Arms and maybe some one mana um, and even Bone Saw um, equipment. You know, one and zero mana equipment. That idea ultimately I didn't really like. So I went with Lithomancer's Focus because I think that one mana for plus two plus two is a pretty good deal already. And there's, there's just Eldrazi in this format. So, you know, if something like this, we can say um, on any of our two power one drops, we can play this, block a Thought Not Seer, and kill it. And our guy survives, you know, that colorless clause. Actually pretty important on Lithomancer's Focus. It either allows us to get through for more damage or block a huge or big-ish Eldrazi guy and survive and, and kill it. So Lithomancer's Focus pretty darn good, and I think, think it's the best pump spell we could play outside of Titan Strength. And to finish off the spells, four copies of Fiery Temper in the deck. As stated previously, this works well with Stern Constable, but over the course of the game, you'll probably get the three mana that you need to cast this, even without the Constable. So there's that, too. Um, but Fiery Temper is just obviously very, very good. It provides the deck a little bit of reach. 
you know, you know, we, sometimes we get them down to like five, six life and we have to do something um, other than attack for the win. And just drawing into Fiery Tempers can often do it. Aggro decks have been winning like that for 20 years. <laughs> so and Fiery Temper is no different. Also allows us, obviously, to remove creatures, which can be really, really important in the mid-game, mostly. We're just trying to blast through for that extra little bit of damage to win the game. Um, and I want to point out, as far as we're talking about burn here, you could take out the Lithomancer's Focus and just put in Fiery Impulse. That could also work. We're playing enough spells to make sure that, that, um, that, that we get the spell mastery on that most of the time. Um, so, you know, you could go more removal if you wanted to. And I'll, I'll make an argument for that when we get to the board here. But I have liked the, um, the abundance of pump spells in the deck, just getting through as much damage as fast as possible. And I know I'm sort of breaking my rule here, this costs 3 mana naturally, but with the Stern Constable in play, this just costs the 1 mana, and that's how we're looking to play it anyway. Like I said before, being able to tap a guy down and kill a guy, extremely, really, just fantastic play for this deck, specifically, you know, so a lot of times we're going to try and play this for just the 1 mana, but if you're forced to cast it for 3, it's still a fine spell. There's 18 lands in the deck, that's about as low as I'd be willing to go, like, ever. Um, but 18 lands in the deck, and all you really need is two to operate off of. Um, but you could play this, by the way. I played Evolving Wilds to help you know activate Delirium on the top of guys. That can happen. Um, but at the same time, you could just play um, Stone Quarry in the deck if you wanted to as a two of. That, you know, I could see doing that too. I um, mean, the first upgrade you'd make to this deck is Battlefield Forge, and maybe a couple copies of Needle Spires um, instead of the Evolving Wilds. That's absolutely the first upgrade. We need the mana as much as possible, but you can run off of this because all you need is one of each mana and you're fine. Here's the sideboard right here and we're doing a couple of things in here, not too much more than a couple of things, but a couple of pretty focused things. The first thing we want to accomplish is getting some help in the mirror match, you know. Um, these decks are fairly cheap to build, these mono white base aggro decks that maybe add a color. These decks are fairly cheap to build um, in this format and I think they're going to be fairly popular too, mostly for that reason, but also because they're fun, they're easy to play, you know. Um, so we're going to probably see a lot of these, even just F&Ms, you know, that's likely where we're going to see these. Um, so the mirror match, I think, is going to be fairly important, and we're doing a lot to help with that. We're playing um, the dual shots, which are amazing, by the way, this mirror match. They, they can two for one a lot. So dual shot is crazy, and I, I'm actually thinking about upping the copies of that. Rending Volley is in there against the same decks, and, you know, this helps against a Jutai, too. So just, Rending Volley has been really good. And then um, Fiery Impulse. I put in the board of this deck, you know, just against the mirror match, we are stacked. We've also got a lightning axe in there to help out with the madness if we, if we need it on um, Fiery Temper and to take out bigger creatures, which is a consideration. It's always a consideration. Um, but I almost want lightning axe to be main deck. I just can't find room for it. Um, aside from that, we're getting some help against mass removal. That's the other thing we want to worry about. Um, we're getting uh, some help against mass and sorcery speed removal in the form of skin invasion and two more copies of lightning berserker. Um, lightning berserker, I think, is that important against the, all the sorcery speed removal? I mean, not just to mention language, but all the sorcery speed removal in the format. This Lightning Berserker is that good. And Skin Invasion is obviously crazy. I mean, it can become the biggest creature in our deck if they, you know, have to, if they have to sweep things with the language or if they, you know, if they have to block something and kill it, you know. Um, so Skin Invasion can seriously be the biggest guy in the deck if they kill the wrong creature. So that's, Skin Invasion has been great against things like, you know, sweepers. Here's the power rankings for you. A final score of 59, which is pretty good for one of these 5 or $10 budget decks. Usually they don't get, you know, close to the 60s like that. This is pre pretty good power level. We can kill pretty quickly. And yeah, I would say that we're susceptible to sorcery and mass removal and stuff like that. But if you haven't noticed, I said we can get around mass removal by doing this. Like a hundred times in this video. So we're a little bit more resilient than it looks like we are. Hello, Ziggy. It's the whole gang's here. Um, but in any case, we're a little bit more resilient than it looks like we are, but we still need a little bit of help um, in that category. So, but aside from that, you know, these cards have proven to be a little bit more powerful than they look to be um, over the last weekend. So we get an extra bump in power level, you know, we're extremely offensive. Um, and, you know, the things that we do poorly, we don't care. We don't care because we're just trying to kill them as quickly as possible. That's all I've got for now, but tomorrow I'll bring you a severely upgraded sort of version of this deck when I bring you blue-white angels. A lot of people are calling that blue-white humans, but I'm pretty sure it's the angels that do all the work in that deck, or at least it's the, that's who's doing all the work in the testing, at least. Um, the deck has been really fantastic. Um, it, you know, it's either mono-white beats, we're calling it, or blue-white angels. I was working on sort of both of them because they're mostly the same deck and one splashes of Jutai and Reflector Mage. That's really the only difference. So I'm probably going to bring you blue-white um, angels, blue-white humans, 
This, that's what most people are excited about right now. So we're going to try that tomorrow and then on to new business from there. i got to do Black White Eldrazi soon, and that's a very important deck um, in the format at large right now. And I also want to do Blue Black Zombies, which is something that a lot of people have asked for and didn't have a fair showing um, at, at Baltimore or any of the other uh, invitational qualifiers over the weekend. People may be saving that deck for the Pro Tour, perhaps, or maybe it's just not that good. Maybe it's got a lot of ins and outs and different little things that people are trying to figure out and brewing it, and it's just not ready yet. Who knows? But I'll give you my version here soon. Let me know which of those decks, Black Red Eldrazi or Blue Black Zombies, you want to see next. That's all I got for now. If you enjoyed the content, I'll tell you one more time, hit the thumbs up button. That takes no time. You can comment. Let me know how you felt about this or any upcoming projects, what you want to see. Share if you think that it should be shared. And then subscribe if you're new. I know a lot of you are new lately. Go ahead, please. Sub. That would be super awesome. You'll get all my content, and then you'll be happy, and I'll be happy, and we'll all be happy. I'm Dev from SVMTG. This is the Igby Monster, and we'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching, my wizards. Cause I can bust you like a question mark block Like a kick at you, I'll treat you to the school of hard shocks Sharp blades like imperial rage burn hot Explosed plots, cut holes in eye sockets